Water. Hi, we are the Water family. My name is Hydrogen, and me and my twin brother live with our father, Oxygen. He is a fireman, and he adopted us when my mother, Methane, got burnt in a horrible fire. There are many single father families just like ours all over the world, covering 75% of Earth's surface. 12 billion light years away is a gigantic cloud of water vapor containing 140 trillion times more water than found in all of Earth's oceans. The closest source of water to Earth is a 100 kilometer deep subsurface ocean on one of Jupiter's moons called Europa. 97% of the water on Earth is found in salty oceans. The remaining 3% is fresh water, found mostly in glaciers and groundwater. Less than 0.3% of all fresh water is in rivers and lakes. 0.003% is contained within living organisms, which are mostly water. Only 0.001% is in the air as vapor, clouds, and rain, hail, and snow. Our family is very neutral as far as the acids and bases are concerned, and we are proud of it. We are tasteless, odorless, transparent, and because of that, we are full of light and life. We get along with many other families like salts, sugars, acids, bases, proteins, and even with the dry ice family called CO2, who gives us all bubbles. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3, turns us on and makes us hard. Despite that most regard us as the best solvents around, we do not get along or mix with the fats and oils at all. Being a single parent family, we are a bit polarized. We attract each other forming bonds called hydrogen bonds that enable us to stay together in a drop of water. This bond between water families allows plants to pull us from their deepest roots to their highest leaves. Because of our shapes and bonds, we take up 10% more room when we sleep as ice than when we are awake flowing around as water. Because of this, we float as ice and like a blanket, protect the life underneath the water from freezing. In the heat of things, when we become steamed, we dream and float high up in the sky. We wake up on dust particles in clouds that, like ice over lakes, are also blankets keeping life underneath warm. When we are with the salts, we stay awake as water longer and do not fall asleep and freeze into ice so fast as we normally do. When we are high on the mountain tops, we dream into our gas state much faster than we normally would. It is as if the heights and the emptiness above leads us up to the clouds to dream. Floating up in the air like a balloon, we landed on a speck of dust and woke up. We were welcomed on cloud nine. We were told that we had successfully evaporated from the ocean and that the wind was blowing us to our next destination, the watershed of Europe called the Swiss Alps. When we finally arrived a few days later, we were all happy to be released as beautiful snowflakes instead of drops of rain or hail. Half asleep, we landed on top of a glacier where we rested and went to sleep until the sun woke us up and we melted and started our trip to flow down the mountain. We could have gone the direct route above ground, but we got the tickets for all the rides. We flowed underground for a while and went so deep that we got very hot. I was relieved to finally spring out of the mountain and to see the sun again. We found ourselves in a hot springs pool filled with people with arthritis. We left the pool and ended up in a small creek where we stayed a while, breaking up rock by sleeping in it a few times. Because we get bigger when we sleep, 
we expand and break anything that confines us. Our next stop was a lake called Watershed, where we got to rest a while. Then we ended up underground again, until we found ourselves being sucked up by a sucking machine called a water pump. We were holding on to other water families, and others were holding on to us. There's a limit to our strength, and holding 10 meters worth of water families is our limit. Had the well been any deeper, we could not have gotten out. It turned out that the pump pumped us into a steam locomotive, and we got to give it a push as they heated us till we boiled into a steam and had a dream we were pushing a train. We woke up on a blade of grass next to the train tracks. The plant we landed on took us away from our father and chained us to a bunch of women called carbon that made organic compounds called carbohydrates all day. A cow eventually ate us. When we told her what happened to us, she kindly rescued us freeing us from the carbohydrates and reuniting us with our dad. The cow told us that the water family was vital to all of life because it allowed just the right soup of chemicals to allow the appropriate molecules to replicate. The cow pissed us out one day into a puddle that trickled into a pond that seeped into a stream which flowed through a lake into a river that emptied into the sea. We arrived just in time for the last performance of the show called Tides. As the moon slowly pulled us higher and higher, the tensions rose, and when we got as high as we could get, we started to fall. Everyone thought they were on a roller coaster ride. We nearly stayed another day for the next ride, but were totally captivated by all the salt that suddenly joined us, praising us for being such good solvents. Being good solvents means that humans use us to clean their shit that ends up polluting their backyard. But their backyard is where they get their drinking water from. The human body contains 75% water, and depending on activity and temperature, requires 1 to 7 liters or kilograms of clean, fresh water per day to function properly. About a billion people around the world routinely drink unhealthy water. Poor water quality and bad sanitation are deadly. Some 5 million deaths a year are caused by polluted drinking water. 1.4 million children die from diarrhea each year at a rate of 160 each hour because of lack of clean water. People who live in the desert, high up on mountains, or on land suffering a drought, suffer from an acute shortage of local fresh water despite its abundance in the world. People living in high populated environments have their water chlorinated and are forced to buy fresh water that is bottled and expensive. It can be foreseen that one day countries will fight wars over fresh water like they now fight over oil. But the stakes for fighting will be much higher. Oil is vital for machines, but water is vital for life.